Welcome back to The Edge. Google upgrades local service ads with some automated photo selections. On top of that, Google alerts us URL parameters are causing some crawling problems. And what competitors are seeking after Google's DOJ antitrust victory? You're listening to News from The Edge for the week of August 12th, 2024, here on Edge of the Web Radio. From the Edge of the Web Studios, here's what we're looking at this week. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm Aaron. That's Morty. Jacob's behind the booth. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Quick, quick, go. <laughs> this is a go. job radio. I got to go. My wife, my wife said I got to go. You should have gone before you got on in the car here, Morty. That's all I'm saying. We're in I a car? Am your ho- yeah, well, this is a, a virtual vehicle right here. This is, this is. We We're have- not stopping. <laughs> You're don't, a make me co- don't make me pull over. <laughs> all right, this is Edge of the Web Radio. I'm your host, I have a Aaron's- flat tire. <laughs> I got a spare tire. How about that? <laughs> Jeez. We're covering SEO and digital marketing each and every week, uh, separate from our weekly interview series here on Edge of the Web, so you can check out and get more information in your inbox as well. We have a newsletter that you can get the entire set of podcast links that we are talking about right into your inbox. Go over to edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. Proud to have Site Strategics as the title sponsor of this episode of the News from the Edge podcast, uh, one of the top SEO agencies here in the Midwest. Come check us out. See what we can do for you. Go over to S. I'll go over to sitestrategics.com. Joining me this week to get his quick take on the news because he, he he's burning to get out of here. That's Morty Oberson. He's the head of I, SEO branding at Wix. I'm not burning to get out of here. I have family obligations. Family obligations. That oh, were sprung I, upon could, me. I resemble that remark. I <laughs> evidently am having to take the entire Wednesday off and take my kids to uh, college again. Didn't know about that. They wouldn't even tell the kids to, they, they can't take their own asses to college. Come on. How they they, they can drive. Oh, yeah, exactly. 24 and 20. They should, they, they should just be oh, gone, God. you know? Please, just, get out. Get your butt <laughs> to college. See you later. You're lucky I'm Take paying for Take my money. Exactly. Yeah, get an Uber. Come on. Hour and a half. Isn't that the advantage of having, like, giving them the money that you don't have to interact and deal with this? Like, just take the money and do what you think. It's a, I think that's what you did at the last uh, Brighton Essay. You are paying people dollars not to talk to you. It was kind of weird. They're... Because I was so popular, I couldn't talk to everybody, so I felt bad. You're just, ha- you're just handing out dollar bills all over the place. <laughs> this this could go bad I very know. well. I, <laughs> I'm just gonna. Yeah, I was not handing I out assumed, dollar bills to anybody. <laughs> I assumed Morty had dollar bills because of all the dancing he was doing. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that's true. He was. Oh, actually. this is off the rails. First okay. story from Search Engine Journal. All right. <laughs> oh, Land. wow. Look at Morty right. just taking over. Fast master. All right. From Adnu Adegbola. How about that? Out of the gate. You know, right. for the audience, I had to like say a recording of <laughs> Anu's name for Aaron. So Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Anu. Over search in land. Google en- enhances local service ads with auto selecting photos. They have an automatic photo selection for local service ads. They aim to boost engagement and ad rankings for businesses that upload high quality images to their profiles. They're rolling out this new feature that automatically selects from profile photos to display in advertisements. So Fact of the matter is you can also optimize and put images inside of your local service ads, but it's actually pulling from the profile, the Google business profile as well. The photos won't appear in every ad depending on user queries or other factors. The feature launches this week for all services, advertisers, adding photos to the LSA profiles can actually help improve rankings, rankings, says they. Upload about three to five high quality images to your LSA profile. Ensure photos are relevant to your work, original and not copied or stolen. I'd actually probably throw in there, not AI. So that said, Google's ad liaison, Ginny Marvin, actually posted that a little a few days ago here, talking about the, the different points on how you want to actually add those in. So if you're doing any type of local service ads, now is the opportunity to be able to enhance your ads and ranking with those particular photos. So that basically means that lawyers will have like pictures of like them chasing ambulances with their head out the window, like a dog with their tongue sticking out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Got it. Action shots. Action shots are what they're looking for. You <laughs> <Right>. know. <laughs> uh, next article here. Google warns 
URL parameters can actually create some crawl issues. This is from Search Engine. What? Panel, Matt. Is that new? <laughs> it's it's not new, but we probably need to. It bears repeating. Put it that way. Are um, e-commerce sites most affected? They are. <laughs> Who knew? That's so How weird. Are you, are you reading the bullet point? <laughs> Why would yeah, this be an from issue? from 2006. <laughs> Why in the world are we even dealing with this nowadays? Uh, Matt Southern wrote the article and actually was quoting from uh, Search Off the Record podcast from Google. Uh, Gary Eish was talking about this. Uh, and again, this, this is literally the same thing we've been hearing. What, okay, what are the URL parameters, first and foremost, uh, Morty? What are they talking about when they're we're saying uh, it can cause crawl errors? Right. So, you know, you go to Amazon and they have like, you know, a pair of jeans, right? Or whatever you're, you're looking at, and you change the color of the jeans. Mm -hmm. So it's like amazon.com slash jeans. Now it's amazon.com slash jeans slash blah, 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 all these sorts of codes and whatever random crap that signify that it's the same product, but you changed it from red to blue jeans. For those who you need a little bit of translation of uh, Morty's blah, 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 if you have filtering, uh, sizes, colors, what have you, it'll append yeah, sorry, to the right, URL right. a, uh, a, right, a uh, right. query so question mark. Well, right. It's the same page, but it can actually cause infinite loops. You can actually see right, infinite versions. versions of the page. And it can go, if you have a gazillion filters, you have a gazillion versions of your page. Oh, my. That's an SEO yep. nightmare right there. Absolutely. So they do give some potential solutions. Google is exploring different ways to handle your right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. self canonical clause right. will actually get rid of all of that. They can. There's looking at URL parameters, potentially developing algorithms to identify redundant URLs. Uh, Ish also suggested clear communication from website owners about their URL structure could help. We could just tell them that, okay, use this method to block URL. And, hey, they also mentioned robots.txt <laughs> could potentially be more to guide crawlers with robots.txt. It's uh, surprisingly flexible with what you can do with it. Of course, they are also ignoring it. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait. Like, it's a good point because Gary mentioned they're trying to find, like, new systems to, like, you know, figure it out and blah, blah, blah. Can right. they kind of figure it out? Like, it's just like the... Just do like a, a okay, I'm, I'm on, I'm on amazon.com slash rustler dash classic dash regular dash stonewash. Right. I think he's been, he's been shopping. That's like the jeans. jeans. Stonewash yeah. rustler classic fit jeans. Okay. Right. 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 And I'm on a 34 waist, 29 length. Now, if I change Bragger. It to one waist, 30 length, <laughs> <laughs> it changes the URL, but nothing. I have a point here, Jacob. <laughs> Nothing in the first part actually changes, right? That classic regular stonewash. They could put a man on the moon, okay? They can tell you what you should be doing to cure kidney stones with an AI <laughs> overview, but they can't figure out rustler.classic-regular-stonewash is the core part of the URL, and right. everything after that is meaningless. They can't figure that one out. It's causing inefficiencies okay, to crawl. It. Yeah, yeah. Now, I have to ask this. Who, who orders okay. jeans online? Maybe. Don't you have to wear them and see how they're fitting, how they're comfortable? No, I know. Once, okay. No. Smart. Once, no. once you okay, get your jeans, brand. Okay, like, you know, if, yeah, you oh, first of all, you know your brand, you know your size, you're good to go. Gotcha. Know your brand, know yourself. Yeah. I got to try them on. And and Amazon does that. Like they've got that. Uh, yeah. oh, what do they call? It? Whatever. Yeah, you can you can try it and send it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All, right. All right. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Once you get your brand and your size, twenty twenty four. I should might be okay. One thing, pants, dude. I only order pants online. Yeah. Pantsonline.com. Real, yeah. real, real men order their jeans online. All right, put your skinny ass down. Let's, do <laughs> Let's talk about <laughs> Site Strategics as the sponsor of this show. Not sponsoring very, very small jeans. The question for you is how do you create authoritative subject matter expertise that Google is looking for? Well, learning from your client is always a place to start, but organizing a well thought through interview is kind of time consuming and you gotta be able to deep dive with those subject matter experts. And that's what we actually do. We actually create a process where you can actually utilize our services to be able to deep dive with 
your subject matter expert or your client to be able to find out more and be able to be armed with top level people also ask and things to know information so we can deep dive deep let's all say it together deep dive deep dive <laughs> with your SME so we can actually transcribe everything that we're recording curate to be able to create some fantastic widgets and content for your website blog content video content audio content and structural and blog content Something that we specialize here in Site Strategic. So give us a call or just drop us a note on chat. You can go straight over to sitestrategics.com, ping us, and we can set up a meeting and actually have a, a deep dive conversation about what this process means and the value of these SME interviews. You remember, it's not about you, it's about SME. Deep dive. <laughs> All right, you want to do a quick deep dive <laughs> over the verge. And we don't usually go to The Verge, but this one was actually kind of interesting. What Google rivals want after the DOJ's antitrust win? This is kind of interesting. This is from Laurel, Lauren Wait, Fell. is this a Captain Obvious? They want to take over. <laughs> they, <laughs> okay, right. double, double, double segment here. <laughs> they, I know what they want. They want to be number one. <laughs> they want to be the no, next Google. not number one. The only one. The, the only, only one. one. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's a Highlander moment. <laughs> they want to cut off Google's head. <laughs> so I, Google, I don't even need to read the article. Google's a Kurgan. All it's right. over. So All right, right. Rivals like Yelp and DuckDuckGo received a huge victory on last Monday when the federal judge ruled that Google is an illegal monopoly. That's huge. But their statements of the ruling expressed some restraint as well. That's because the work of restoring competition has just begun, and the judge hasn't decided what that work entails. Now, that's crazy that a judge is going to actually decide what the restoration of com competition is. That's got to be well thought out, and there's got to be some independent thought into this particular penalty stage. Google's competitors are pushing for changes they believe will help their business, which actually is probably going to be a little bit harder than it sounds. So Yelp's CEO Jeremy Stoppelman said, while we're heartened by the decision, a strong re remedy is critical. Kamel Babaz, the senior vice president of public affairs for DuckDuckGo, said we passed the key milestone, but there's a lot of history to be written. Google will do anything it can to get in the way of progress, which is why we hope we see a robust set of remedies uh, that the trial can actually dig into all the details, propose an array of remedies that will actually work. So here's the deal is that you know, we already saw that the EU ruled Google a monopoly, I believe it was last year, and DuckDuckGo is calling for truly independent technical experts to monitor any remedies imposed by the court to the point to ensure that Google doesn't find <laughs> new ways to give itself preferential treatment. DuckDuckGo also proposed that the court bar Google from buying default status or pre-installation, which would scuttle its multi-billion dollar deal with Apple and provide access to its search ad a APIs. So here's the deal here is that there's a number of concerns as soon as we get into this type of penalty stage. And just like we've seen at the U.S. representative and Senate level is that the lawmakers don't have a clue from the technology side of things how to even navigate big tech, right? The lawmakers probably think DuckDuckGo is Aflac. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> That's okay. Millennials think that Capital One is the capital of the country. <laughs> oh. oh, that hurts. That hurts. Or Gen Z, X, whatever. The, the I wouldn't doubt are. it. They're talking about different potential structural changes. They advocate that separating Google's Chrome and Android operations to actually enhance competition, spinning that off outside of the company. How in the world would that, would, that would work? I have no idea. Google's response, they plan to appeal the ruling arguing that the decision acknowledges its search engine's quality but unjustly limits its accessibility. I got a, a little bit of a deep thought here. With all oh. these diff different... Uh, deep uh, thought. With sparks. <laughs> hey, yeah, you're stealing um, a segment from my podcast now. Oh, really? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's right. That's right. We're going to grab, right. that, gra grab that audio. Um, here's Copyright, the thing. Copyright, 2024 TM. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, I, th I thought I thought we had liberty to be able to use that, but um, here's right, the thing: yeah, is that go. could this be the unique opportunity for AI 
to actually, in an AI platform, to inject itself into these operating systems and these devices to be the balancer of these different search properties, these different search platforms that you're seeing perplexity, you're seeing a number of these platforms aggregate different search results from different search engines. Could AI be the default fork in the road or the signpost for users that they'll actually interact with that AI concierge, so to speak, to be able to showcase different search results from different platforms and not have a default browser anymore, but actually have a default AI agent curating all that information that you can train on. Is this the moment in which Literally, we talked about it today. Could this very well be judgment day <laughs> that all of a sudden AI comes in and actually starts directing us to what's really relevant? That would be an interesting website. Like you get to you see the results of different search engines and you pick which one you want. Exactly. That's interesting. Exactly. Choose, choose your own adventure. Somehow the search engines would block that. <laughs> never happen. That's true. That's absolutely true. Because search engines, it seems like, have turned into the new like SEO tools. It's like taking shots at each other, calling each other the devil. <laughs> like you just take DuckDuckGo and like I don't know, and uh, Google and replace it with Ahrefs and Semrush. Like same script. It's crazy what's happening now. Yeah, they really are going at each other. And on top of that, they're developing Ooh. their own AIs individually. And I, I was just thinking about this before show prep. This could very well be the moment where society with congressional oversight or at least recommendations moves this, the AI platforms into a much more consumer oriented space than ever before. Oh I'm yeah, Congress can totally handle this. No, they, <laughs> yeah. they totally could. Once they get on the Wi-Fi, <laughs> wherever the Wi-Fi is, <laughs> they're they'll the... figure it out. <laughs> Who's but I love that phone? line from the DuckDuckGo guy. Woo. Google will do anything it can to get in the way of progress. Yeah. He was then quoted as saying, Google is a devil. <laughs> like, what, they're, what is they're, all, like, <laughs> they're all, all of these search engines are all out of their minds at this point. They Maybe really not are. being I, like for Bruce Canal seems like a nice dude. I mean, he's a very nice dude and they kind of seem balanced sometimes, but the rest of them seem like they're off their like rockers. I kind of expected Binks the is, article. Binks to me comes up the most balanced. I kind of expected the article to open. Longtime Google rivals like Yelp and DuckDuckGo hope to receive a huge victory on Monday when the rest of the world learn about longtime rivals like Yelp and DuckDuckGo. <laughs> Who are right. those? Right, right. <laughs> Breaking news, DuckDuckGo is a rival of Google. Said nobody ever. <laughs> Who? All right. right. It's, right. it's going to be tough. It is going to be tough, and you know this is going to be an ongoing conversation. I mean, it's going to change pivotally. Uh, what we do as SEOs and digital marketers as well, because things are going to be a heck of a lot more stilted towards other competitors. And who optimizes towards being anyway nowadays? Who? I was not going anywhere for a while. You're good. Yeah. You, you're, you, you are correct. All right. That said, let's shift over to some AI news real quick. I wanted to show a page from a Search Engine Journal. Annabella Niss actually gave us six best AI content checkers to use in 2024. From an AI standpoint, we have to arm you, our listeners, with some tools in the trade to be able to push back on content, let alone if you have any type of subcontractors that you're utilizing or you're, you're inheriting clients, right? And you, one of the first things out of the gate should now be was previous content written by AI. So she gives us a list of six. We highly concur with this list. Their analysis tools to be able to actually scan content. So GPT-0 is a, it proclaimed the first public open AI detector, according to its website, and it's le a leading choice among the tools that are out there. So what it does is actually is analyzing humanistic patterns and more predictable patterns of AI content generation. Check that out, GPT-0. The cost basic plan is free. It includes up to 10,000 words per month. The essential plan starts at $10. Originality.ai, I should say, is designed to detect AI-generated content across various language models like ChatGPT, GPT-4.0, Gemini Pro, Claude 3, Llama 3, and others. It bills itself as the most accurate AI detector and targets publishers, agencies, and writers, but not students. 
we actually use that in the shop, and uh, we've been very, very happy with the results that it was given. Now, you have to know what you're scanning. You can't scan a 300-word article, and it comes back 50% AI because the content's not deep enough to be able to see those patterns. They've got a pricing model there as well. I won't go through the rest of the pricing. $12.45 per month. They actually do a credit system, and it's relatively economical, I think. Copy Leaks is another uh, AI analysis tool. It covers 30 languages detects AI models, including ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude. Uh, quick, that's probably a good one, too, if you don't speak any languages at all and you're trying to hire out any kind of translation service. If you don't speak any languages any at other all. Lang oh. any, can I say any languages? Any I meant, languages. <laughs> if you don't speak any languages, good luck. I meant <laughs> any other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Way, like, <laughs> if OpenAI was smart, they would be like, we offer for $5 a month, we'll tell you if it's us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we did report last week that they have a watermarking tool that is like 95% no, accurate, no, to be a, a, but they're not actually rolling no, that out turn at all. Yeah. Winston oh, AI is no. another tool, uh, another, another popular AI oh, content detection tool. Nice. Winston, a 99.98% accuracy rate uh, goes across users in education, SEO, and writing industries, and they are able to identify content generated by the different LLMs as uh, what we've mentioned before. You can easily paste and upload your documents as you can with the other tools. Trace GPT, it's an extremely accurate AI detector. Well, check it out. It's user-friendly and it can allow you to upload files across a range of formats, docs, text, ODT, RTF, and PDFs. You can see how it actually analyzes that. Hive Moderation, yeah. it's a company that specializes in content moderation, offering AI content detector and a unique differentiator. This is what's really cool. They actually do this across different formats, several media formats, text, audio, and image. Now, all that being said, just as an editorial note, Social media is exploding with AI crowd shots or accusations on AI. I mean, we knew this was coming. The political temperature is going to be even higher in the months to follow, right? And there's so much coming at both parties in America that that wasn't a crowd shot. That wasn't real. That guy's got a long neck. That person's holding up a sign with three hands. I mean, it is getting ugly out there. And... Hopefully, these type of detection tools can be used right. independently to be able to analyze this. But it's I, it's terrible. I'll, I'll also say internally here, mm -hmm. we had an exercise where we were working on our own personal bios. And I'm admittedly not a writer. And I especially don't like writing about myself. I think a lot of people are probably like that. that people don't like writing about themselves. No one likes to. I mean, maybe other people do. I, I won't speak for other people. But <laughs> I don't like to write about myself. So I... I used AI to try to write about myself. I wrote up some bullet points about myself, and I said, hey, AI, help me write about myself. Mm -hmm. And then I took that, and I kind of fact-checked it, and I worked it and tweaked it a little bit more because it just kind of helped be a little bit more verbose. Sure. And then I sent through a tool. I won't say which one. And it came back and said it was like 99% written by AI, even though it wasn't at that point because I had rewritten it myself. And I rewrote it three or four times, and it kept coming back 99%, 99%, 99%, 99%. Got it. So just, I mean, you know, these tools are not, themselves perfect because even oh, though awesome. i was assisted by ai uh -huh. and the topic was me right. it wasn't like i was like write me an essay about you know george washington crossing the river on a boat or something like like it wasn't pulling from anything out there it was just about me and it was facts that i provided right it, it was still coming back like hot, so if, if they if you know this is a school assignment or anything like that it probably would have failed have you been noticing that I've been looking at you a little bit oddly recently? Are you saying something about me? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> I do believe that you are AI, and I we're going to have robot. to have a talk after okay. this. <laughs> I would like to be paid in know, credits how, how, from wait, here on out. Take a hold of your hand. Which one? <laughs> All matter. three of them. Any hand. <laughs> oh, okay. He's got five fingers. He's good. We're good. He's human. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. A uh, quick AI tool. Check this out. Google Meet will soon be able to take notes for you as well. So, are you guys sick of note takers? All the things that <laughs> actually join you on your Zoom session? <laughs> well, there's a new one. Google Meet is actually going to be offering a take notes for me feature rolling out very soon. If you're missing key points during a conversation, 
Google will actually be able to take those notes for you. So we're now going to be in a, a, a post-note-taking AI environment. We'll look back on the days of actually taking notes from a conversation and say, how did they do that? My gosh, that's so inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. 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 So, do you guys like these? Uh, nah, some of I, them I, I know you're using one, right? Aaron, you're using a new one right now. Yeah, I'm like using it? a new one, Fathom, right now. Do you like it? I do, I do. It's giving me action items, yeah. gives me the ability to highlight a point in the conversation that will actually, like a bookmark or something like that. Has it ever screwed you over? Has it ever missed an important action item? Yes. That, okay. Yes, it absolutely that's, that's always my fear. With, like, I think those are cool because it can catch things. Like, oh, look at What is that? It's a, note, it's a notebook. It's a okay, notebook. Morty is holding up. What is that thing? It's a like a rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in on Morty here. Yeah. All right, some so sort of rectangle. People who aren't watching, Morty is holding like no a. Book. It's like a rectangle. I, and when I'm in a cover meeting, on it. Uh -huh. Scott, I, I I take my pen. Yeah. Oh, it's holding two down. things. What's, what's it? <laughs> a thing that reminds so like me to follow up. It looks up. like a. It looks like a stick. <laughs> and after the meeting, I I go back to the notes and I follow up, add to a Monday board, whatever, whatever. Send an email, whatever it is, and then and then I'm done. So oh, it's almost crazy. like a. stick. A stick that you're pressing down on a rectangle of of white. It's like tree. it's flimsy. It. It's flimsy, like a yeah, like a like you scraped it off of a tree. <laughs> yep, that's yeah. interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah. Oh my god. Very. Yeah. And the, whole, and the did, whole thing takes like three seconds. Weird. Did Google write that for you? Now what? That's that's my question. Is is no? He can't say. Now how how do you search it later? Okay. Yes. How do you search? How do you actually do queries against your... I, I, hey, how are we doing on time, Morty? And I, and I, and I reopen. I have two minutes. Okay. All right. Fine, Very fine, glad. Fine. Hey, hold on a second. Happy to have Inlinks as a continued sponsor of Edge of the Web. Did you know that entities play a major part in how you rank online? Go check out Inlinks today. and get some great building tools for your content and get, get some great analyses, as well as a fantastic interlink software deployment tools. So go check them out. Go over to edgeofthewebradio.com forward slash end links. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Very blast. In the Merchant Center, this is from Search Engine Roundtable from Barry Sports. Google search listing S-R-S-L-T-I-D URL parameters from Merchant Center. You can actually increase the complaints around Google search. <laughs> There, there's been an increase in complaints around Google search listings URL with the S-R-S-L-T-I-D URL parameter tagged along to the URL as the canonical URL in Google search. In fact, Google matches on hundreds of thousands of these URLs now and does serve them in the search results under that parameter. Kevin on X asked him about this, and he said, why do some of my clients see the Google Merchant search parameter in their organic search results for blogs? He said that if you do a in URL SRS LTID dash in text, we'll give you the show notes, put that in the show notes for you. You'll find hundreds of thousands of these examples. After you do that, you can just search for any title, any of those listings to see if Google actually does serve the page and list the page's result with that parameter. This is all part of Google Analytics and Merchant Center integration where that SRS parameter is appended to the links generated by Google Merchant Center in organic shopping results. Number of the complaints about this on Reddit and Google Analytics forum. Brody Clark also posted about this issue in LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. If you'll notice, the SRS in your uh, URLs, don't worry, it's a common problem now, but make sure that you're using canonical tags on your website to avoid appearing as duplicates. So that's the point at the end of this article here is make sure you use canonical. Google feature snippets with emojis and special characters. Please, please, Google, get rid of those because that's just going to be completely, oh, that's completely great. abused. <laughs> so check that out. There's now emojis finding their way into featured snippets. And you know it's just going to be a crap fest, right? Uh, yeah. Last, get off my lawn. Get off my line. Last one, and we'll let him go. Google says we don't track how expensive it is to crawl, render, and index, and serve pages. Really? This Sounds like how I run my budget. Yeah, pretty much. There's been some confusion on how Google handles pages that might be more costly for Google search to crawl, render, index, and serve, especially JavaScript pages. Google does not have a monetary budget per site in terms of 
of what it will spend, uh, if it will spend X number of dollars on the crawling budget on your site. So yeah, they absolutely do pay attention to how much, but not explicitly to your website, says Martin Split of Google. Do you believe that, Morty? Yeah, I don't think they're looking at like one page. Like, oh, that's so expensive. I'm not crawling that page and indexing it. That would be too expensive to do that. Just to actually look at the different domains and, and do yeah, that. just like the terminal. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that said, a bit of a lackluster end of of our show here, but uh, always sorry. go over to Search Engine Roundtable to make sure that uh, you check out everything from Barry. He's crossed the forty five thousand article mark over at the Search Engine Roundtable and Search Engine Land, as well as others. Huge resource to go check out. Any final thoughts for Morty as he runs to his family event? I have to go now. Thank Love you. you, Morty. See you. Bye. Yeah, you do. Okay. <laughs> bye, everybody. That's, bye-bye. That's it for The Edge this week. Check out our second episode of the Maiba Sefuentes interview that we had dropping this week. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we post different video elements out of our interview series as well as our news piece from all of us over at Edge. If you like what you hear, why don't you give us a a quick review over at ratethispodcast.com forward slash edge today and uh, let us know how we did or what we could do better. Probably uh, a little bit, so just let us know. From all of us over at Edge, thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay well, and do not be a piece of cyber drift. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.